97 KCAL rocks. It is time for some sports with Pep. Pep, what is going on, man? Patrick, I got to be honest, man. It was a very emotional weekend for, for sports uh, for a lot of different reasons. And let's start with college football because if you're a USC fan, obviously uh, Friday night against Utah did not go the way you were hoping as USC fell to Utah for the second time this season. So what does it all mean? Well, it means USC dropped out of the national championship picture. The USC will actually play Tulane in the Cotton Bowl now. And Utah will go to uh, to the Rose Bowl against Penn State. So your four teams in the national semifinals, which does not include USC now, if they would have beat Utah, it, the Trojans would be one of them. But it's going to be Georgia against Ohio State and Michigan against TCU. One of those teams will win the national championship this year. TCU manages to sneak on in there. Good for them, man. We'll see what happens. I hope they do not get blown out like crazy. My goodness. And USC, I mean, the kid did everything he could, right? I mean, my goodness. I mean, he was bleeding. He was hobbling. <laughs> he did everything he could possibly do. But the defense did not do much stopping, especially towards the end. And we knew how tall of a task Utah was going to be. And they were. Yeah, beating a good team twice in one season is very difficult. The first time around, USC only lost by one point. This time around, it was 47-24. So USC, again, they were in the driver's seat. They controlled their own destiny. You beat Utah, you're going to have a chance to play for the national championship. They lost, and now they're out. Now they're going to go to the Cotton Bowl against a, a, a Tulane team that apparently is pretty good. I, I didn't know Tulane even had football, really. Uh, but they're nationally ranked. They're actually pretty good. So, But it's not just, you know, going to the Cotton Bowl is not just, that's not the same as going for a national no. championship. To be in the Final Four and then going to Tulane was quite a drop. Yes, yeah, it was. I feel bad for USC, but it's still a, a great season. It looks like it's only going to get better with head coach Lincoln Riley there. Uh, if you're a UCLA football fan, they will play in the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl against Pitt on uh, December 30th. So those are our Southern California uh, college football bowl games for our guys. Great. That's right. <laughs> Another bowl game. I'm like, oh my gosh, all these sponsorships. I know the Sun Bowl, but now it's officially the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl with all that sponsorship money now. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, now let's get to some NFL news. And man, uh, like USC, who was kind of heartbroken all weekend long, 49er fans, including myself, did not want to get this news that Jimmy G, Jimmy Garoppolo, the quarterback for the 49ers, broke his foot yesterday against the Miami Dolphins, and he's projected to be out for the entire season. Now, the 49ers won the game 33-17, so I think that speaks well for the defense, the run game, and backup quarterback Brock Purdy, who can manage the team and hopefully get some wins and, and keep the 49ers um, in the hunt. Yeah, I mean, that is kind of the thing, right? Uh, he has a lot of weapons. If he can manage the game and do that, he has the defense that can pull it off. But man, to hear that Jimmy G broke his foot. I mean, the news started spreading like crazy at the Rams game. I was at the Rams Seahawk game with my kids in Inglewood. And everyone was like, Jimmy G broke his foot. And everyone was like, no way. Yeah. Remember, Trey Lance started the season as the uh. starting quarterback. And then Jimmy G got in there and took him to another level. And for this, um, it's just, it's just unfortunate for the 49ers. But the good thing is, like you mentioned, Patrick, there's enough good players that they don't need Brock Purdy to carry this team. He just needs to do his part and not, you know, make any errors. Don't do anything, you know, to, to hurt the team, shoot, shoot themselves in the foot. Do they pick up another quarterback? I mean, who do they have left? They got, who was, man, he's the 14-year NFL journeyman. Is it Josh Johnson? I think oh. they signed him off somebody's practice squad. So, I mean, oh. he's like an insurance policy. I think I think Purdy did enough yesterday against Miami that he they'll be, they'll feel comfortable going with him going forward. But, but, yeah, I don't know if there's anybody just out there waiting in the wings, you know, that you could just bring in at the last moment. But I believe they did get Josh Johnson off their, I think it was the Broncos practice squad, uh, to back up Purdy. But remember, and Brock Purdy, he's famous because he was – Mr. Irrelevant. He was the last yes. guy picked in the NFL draft this past season out of Iowa State. So that's how we know this guy because yeah. he was the last one picked in the NFL draft. Hey, paging Cam Newton, huh? Hey, 
You know, who knows? It probably depends how the next couple of weeks look, right? You know, if the 49ers yeah. can keep it together and Purdy does a good job. If Purdy does a pretty good job, then he's going to stay in there. But we'll we'll find out. Hey, and Patrick, yeah. you mentioned that Seahawks-Rams game that you were at yesterday. We found out more quarterback news. The Matt Stafford has a, a spinal cord contusion. And it looks like he's done for the season. Not like the Rams are going to make a run uh, for the playoffs. And the Seahawks getting that win yesterday. I'm sure you were fired up about that, 27-23. Uh, the kids were most excited when DK finally controlled his temper because he always just lets Jalen Ramsey drive him nuts. And finally, for some reason, I for the first time in years, I seem to see DK actually not let him bother and just go touch, just go score a touchdown over him. You know? Yeah, yeah, uh, D- yeah. DK Metcalf is when he's got his head in the game was one of the most dominant receivers yeah. in the league. And Jalen Ramsey, he's an instigator, right? Like that's yes. part of the that's part of his game is to get into the yes. receiver's head. And uh yeah, when DK's on, he's on, man. He's one of the best. And Jalen is very good at that. He's very good at getting under your skin uh-huh. and DK let him get under it forever, but finally it seemed like he stopped. And Geno Smith, he had a career day. His his greatest day he's ever had as a pro. Isn't that crazy? The Seahawks yeah. I I feel confident are going to make the playoffs like that's just crazy when you look at all the good teams in the nfc west if you told me you know the cardinals and the and the rams would be the two teams not making the playoffs i know we still got several more weeks uh i think five more games but the seahawks are really in a good spot to make that uh, you know the playoffs so yeah hopefully it happens man come back player of the year geno smith yeah a great story some great stories this year but geno smith right there at the top of the list uh, in terms of nfl stories this weekend uh over the weekend the raiders won their third game in a row patrick look out here comes the silver and black uh maybe back from the dead they're at five and seven overall after that 27 20 win against the chargers yesterday and the chargers now at six and six they're not even one of the seven teams if the season ended today they would not make the playoffs they would not be one of the seven teams so they're kind of fading a little bit and the Raiders are making this late season push three wins in a row and boy you could really see the connection between Adams and Carr my goodness Devontae went bananas 170 some yards it was crazy yeah Devontae Adams and Derek Carr that's a, a lethal one-two punch you yeah. know quarterback receiver yeah. duo in the NFL when those guys are clicking the Raiders are tough to stop even when you're going to try to double team Devontae Adams the the they seem to find a way to connect, connect those dots and get into the end zone. So the, the Raiders, I don't know. I'm not saying they're going to make the playoffs, but they've certainly made things interesting here at the end of the season to to maybe leapfrog a couple teams and get a little bit closer to that final playoff spot in the AFC. And Patrick, the big game in the AFC yesterday, one more final uh, football score for you is the Bengals over the Kansas City Chiefs in Kansas City. So I don't know if it's early, too early to say that the Bengals have – Kansas City's number but they now they've beaten them a couple times in a row including the AFC championship game from a season ago and uh Joe Cool Joe Burrow man doing it with the Bengals you got to you've got to count Cincinnati when you're talking about teams that could make a Super Bowl run and it looks like the Bengals are are that team again It's one of those things where you're right just uh sometimes they got your number and Joey B seems to have the Chiefs number he's 3 and 0 I know man it's just weird like Kansas City looks so good I feel like against everybody else, but pedestrian when they when they play the Bengals for some reason. So obviously, kudos to the to the Bengals. They're doing something right. They're doing something that other teams can't do uh, against Kansas City. Yeah. So that was that was a big win yesterday for Cincinnati. All right, let's pivot. Let's talk a little NBA, Patrick. All of a sudden, the Lakers. They're coming on strong. They've won eight of their last 10 games, and Anthony Davis is playing like an MVP. He dropped 55 points in a big win against the Wizards yesterday. So it's not a surprise here that when Anthony Davis is playing like one of the top three players in the NBA, the Lakers are going to look really good. But when he's playing bad or he is hurt, the Lakers don't even look like a playoff team. Like It's, it's like night and day. If Anthony Davis is great, the Lakers will be great, and he, he has been the last 10 games. And we are just on pins and needles hoping he doesn't get hurt. That's pretty much what's happening, right? I mean, it's, it feels inevitable. Yeah. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago they were saying, you know what, maybe there's some rumors. Maybe we should trade Anthony Davis and try to start the rebuild and get some pieces for him. But you can see what the Lakers are when he's healthy and playing great. The Lakers are a playoff team. They've won eight of their last ten. He's dropping 55. He's, you know, he's, he's popping off right now. So it'll be very interesting to see what the Lakers are going forward if – if he stays healthy. Yeah. 
That's the big question mark on Anthony Davis. And finally, uh, man, the United States World Cup team. I wanted these guys to win so bad on Saturday against the Netherlands. But the Netherlands, clearly clearly the Dutch are the, are the better team. They won 3-1, to one, so the United States is now out of the World Cup. And uh, it was just unfortunate, Patrick. They, we just got beat. They were the better team. They got The U.S. got beat. The amount of shots on goal oh. was just... It was like a machine gun coming at our goalie. And then their goalie is 6'8", and as le- ath- ath- athletic as can be, man. And, I mean, it was hard to get by him. Yeah, somebody said on Twitter, they're like, man, how big is that goalie? And somebody said, it's like having, I don't know, like Paul George or LeBron James in- in playing goalie for the other team. Like, that's how big this guy was. <laughs> yeah, dude, having LeBron as your goalie? Okay, <laughs> dude, he's athletic and 6'8", but... You're right. We did get beat by the better team, but job well done, Team USA, yes. to make it to the knockout phase. Exactly, exactly. And next time we see these guys in World Cup play, don't forget, on you know, 2026, the World Cup is coming to North America. The United States will host the, the majority of the World Cup games, a couple in Canada, a couple in Mexico, but most of it will be in the United States, including Los Angeles. Oh, man. See, so keeping us up to date with the scoop that's going on in your sports. He is our guy, Pep. Tell him how to get your stuff. Hey, get my stuff on Inland Sports, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Inland Sports, the YouTube channel. Check it out. Inland Sports. Thanks, Pep.